Hi, I'm Momtaz. Welcome to Hello Hugh, the show where I chat to chromatic characters about the joy of colour. So if you're a fellow colour lover, then Hello Hugh is for you. My guest today is Grace Smile. Now she's a queer jewellery designer who uses her social platforms to talk about mental health and sexuality with lots of fabulous fashion thrown in. Now Grace, your Instagram handle bio lists you as a rainbow hunter. Now you're definitely very much known for being drawn to that aesthetic and it's what we see a lot of you. So what is it about the rainbow aesthetic visually that kind of excites you? I'm, I'm a very visual person. That's what I, I, things engage me visually. So immediately I'm sort of drawn to the, uh, the brightness and the colours and the arrangement. I, I find it very visually satisfying for each colour to be in like gradient order. Um, that gives me a sense of like calm and harmony, if that makes sense, um, which is usually what I'm trying to get. So that's kind of why I'm drawn towards it in that sense really interesting because I love rainbows but I've never thought of them in that way that they're actually sort of ordered in this specific way and it's almost a bit mathematical sounding. Um, now we need to talk about your fringe because it's a very iconic, it's kind of like your signature is having uh, the rainbow fringe. Um, so what is it about this fringe when you look in the mirror in the mornings um, that you know you see you and you feel like you're being you and that, that fringe sort of represents who you are? Um. There's, it's interesting, there's so many different aspects to why I wear rainbow, which I'm discovering new every single day. But um, I suppose in the sense of the fringe, it's such a key element to my identity and something that's quite permanent. <laughs> you know, I can't change it. And that then intertwines in within, you know, my sexuality and being part of the LGBTQ community. Um, and it just reminds me, I suppose, like you said, when I get up and I look in the mirror, it sort of reminds me that there are pe other people out there, um, that there is a community. Um, and I just, yeah, I just love the colour. It lifts my mood as well, um, which is another aspect to why I wear a rainbow. What I love about your fringe is that sometimes it's in the kind of pastel end of the spectrum, but sometimes it's very vibrant, but it's still very much a rainbow as well. Now you mentioned um, that I mean, you're a queer jewellery designer and you, you talk about that openly, that you're, you're a member of the LGBTQI uh, plus community and rainbows have historically been associated with this community. A lot of people actually say to me like they love my LGBTQ dress or if I've got some rainbow they'll refer to that and um, I mean I love rainbows and um, I very much support the LGBTQI community as well but I don't actually know where the whole rainbow um, connection started from. Um, is that something that you, you know much about that you might be able to enlighten me? I know a little bit about sort of the pride flag and the creation and the way it's been adapted um, over the years as we've learned more about our community. I know it's been adapted recently, um, well, 2018, I think, to include um, more stripes on the corner, which include a brown and a black stripe and also a pink light blue and white stripe which are representative of the um minorities of the black and brown minorities in our community and also the transgender community which um, it's, it's a more inclusive and diverse flag so that's the one we're now adopting um, but yeah people do associate it with our community which i quite like because it's a conversation starter if anything you know so. I wasn't aware of that so we've got our sort of classic pride rainbow but it's now got some additions of brown and black in there as well yeah, yeah. that it's is really nice because it's, it's it shows progression and I think that's so important in communities and movements alike I know you also talk a lot about uh, about your mental health um, in your sort of social posts as well, and um, you are a warrior of uh, bipolar disorder. And that's something that you're very open about as well. So, in terms of mental health and colour, do you think there's a connection between the two? And how do you feel that colour, I guess, plays a role in your life in that sense? Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, I think colours saved my life, which people find very dramatic for me to say, but um, a lot of people didn't know me before this, especially now as 
social media is always drawn to the visuals um so yeah a lot of people this is they're like oh you just do you just work for fun but it's very much a key element to my recovery in a sense um because i have multiple diagnoses um the main one which i talk about is actually borderline personality disorder um, but I do also have bipolar disorder. I find it very difficult to regulate my emotions and it's very much beyond my control. So I find colour can regulate the sort of emotions that are more difficult to deal with, you know, sort of anguish and sadness and everything. It's It, it uplifts or brings me back, makes me aware, I think. Mm. That's, that's for mental health. I just need pointers and sort of looking at colour is like, ah, we're back you know, <laughs> check in with yourself, see how you're doing um, and progress forward. But so people have, um, I guess they have their set ideas about colour. So they might think, you know, red is quite a warm colour and it makes them feel quite hot and then blue is like this cold colour. So when you think about colours, you know, when you're grounding yourself, do you think of it in that sense or do you have your own interpretations of colour? Oh, that's such a good question. Um, and not something I've actually mm. looked into. Um, I think the grounding element is I suffer a lot with dissociation so that's like completely tapping out with reality so I it's grounding in a sense it's just a reminder <laughs> um, what about um, when you choose what to wear um, in the mornings do you find that you're led to a sort of mood led to certain colours on certain days I ordinarily find myself wearing rainbows most days, um, mm -hmm. but I do, I have been known to have like once a month I'll wear completely black and white, you know, it almost feels like a refresh. Um, I'm a person of extremes and that's to do with my conditions, but um, I do, yeah, if I'm in a different mood, I can be drawn to different things. I think yellow if I'm having a really good day, you'll find me in yellow. I wear a lot of colour, but I don't wear black and white, but I've not thought of it as being perhaps a reset and, and perhaps wearing it once a month might make me, I don't know, like appreciate colours even more on the other days, perhaps. Yeah, I think that's it. I, I think I realise how much I miss it and then I appreciate it more. Not that I don't enjoy wearing black and white, but I think, yeah, it does seem, I, I'm, I'm the kind of person I need to clean a slate and start again. Mm. Um, yeah. And you're also a jewellery designer, so what role does colour play in your design work? Oh, it plays a massive role in my work. Um, I suppose my work usually tends to be quite conceptual or it's either collaborating because I'm, I'm still at university, so I'm still studying. Mm. Um, so it's collaborating with brands. Um, I remember I did one project, it was to do with like seed beads, like little glass seed beads. Mm. And it was all to do with colour and it was, um, I like the visual of it. I think it flows well. I think people are attracted to it. Um, and also, I think jewellery, like, rainbow makes me, like, happier. So if I'm, like, rainbow jewellery, I'm, like, if I can give that to someone else, that is, like, very much a token of happiness and, I guess, joy um, in that sense. In fact, I've got a friend who's a jewellery designer and she made me this rainbow necklace and it always makes me happy wearing it. So I definitely think sort of gifting somebody a rainbow, perhaps in the form of jewellery, is actually a really nice gift to give. It's just, just sort of yeah, yeah, definitely kind of lift your mood. <laughs> I think it's a, a shrink plastic item where she's sort of drawn and coloured in a rainbow and then it's turned into this. Um, but I've decided I'm going to wear it for all my uh, colour chats now because it kind of feels like, yeah, I mean, getting in the zone. <laughs> when I'm wearing it um so like you can wear it in the zone with it as well you know you put on your pair of earrings and you're ready for the day so absolutely if you put on your pair of earrings, you're like right we're setting this off for, <laughs> for sure so I think a lot of the population um have seen more rainbows than they've ever seen in their lives lately because sort of over lockdown um, there's been rainbows on everybody's windows and lots of rainbows celebrated everywhere um, and how's that made you feel to obviously be this rainbow hunter and this rainbow loving person to suddenly see them everywhere? Yeah it's been very bizarre to be honest to say the least it's been very very strange um, and I'm also kind of conflicted about the whole subject I think it's really lovely and uplifting and great um, and I'm so glad it's like creating a sense of community 
Um, it's been very weird for me because most a lot more people talk to me, which is the nicer aspect mm-hmm. of it. Um, and you know, it's brightening up our streets. I think it's keeping a lot of people going. So yeah, for that aspect, so, yeah, I'm very happy with people plastering rainbows everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I feel like um, you know, there'll just suddenly be more rainbow stuff perhaps ending up in the kind of end of say or reject piles and uh, rainbow levels like ourselves will then be able to snap up lots of new rainbow things for our homes yeah. <laughs> or wardrobes yes. which will be great I always find that after pride everyone buys their one t-shirt that they wear to the pride parade and then I go buy it once they give it away <laughs> <laughs> that is superb and I've seen a lot of your outfits that you do make yourself and you do tend to use I guess found items or old items or sort of charity shop finds um, and when you when you pick up things or inherit new things or someone gives you something um, do you kind of assess it by color or do you assess it by the sort of object and what it is yeah um, I think if it is if the colour is the centre of the object, if that makes sense, if that's the key kind of element to it, then I'll go, I'll process it by colour order, usually. Um, but uh, a lot of my work is not colourful as well. Um, <laughs> but I keep my Instagram colourful because I know what people like. But um, <laughs> there is a there is slight diversity in that aspect. But um, yeah, I suppose, I suppose colour is the main thing I do look at mm. with these things when I first get them. Uh, yeah. So finally, um, I want to ask you about rainbows in general. If there's someone who's kind of drawn to the aesthetic, but they're fearful of it, because rainbows, if you're wearing a sort of rainbow item like your jumper, uh, it definitely, you know, sort of draws attention. And it feels like sometimes to wear colour, you've got to be slightly confident. Um, so what's your view on that? Do you think you need to be a confident person to wear colour or does colour make you more confident? Um, or what tip would you give to someone to perhaps try a sort of bit of rainbow aesthetic? Sure. I mean, I don't consider myself a confident person, which is very interesting to a lot of people. I think the, the colour gives me confidence. Um, it's also a talking point, you know. It's easier to make conversation when you've got something you can talk about. Um, and I actually, that's one of the reasons I started wearing it was because I struggle so much with anxiety and interacting with people um, that this, yeah, this was the pointer. Um, but if they're struggling with the, I think ease it in. Don't go rainbow, <laughs> you know, like do sort of one item at a time. Um, and it's, it would, it, it was also quite weird for my, my surrounding family and everyone else. So yeah, easing, easing into it is I think best for yourself and I suppose your environment. Thank you so much. I do need to mention your amazing rainbow eye as well because makeup I know is a big part of your uh, aesthetic as well and it's beautiful. (laughs) Well thank you so much for coming to talk to us about rainbows. I love them and it's great to meet someone else who loves them as well and uh, I'm hoping there'll be much wider love for them and appreciation for them um but of course one last thing actually how do you feel when you see an actual rainbow in the sky it's the best feeling ever <laughs> i love it <laughs> everyone points them out to me like even a, ra- a randomer in the street they'll go there's a rainbow look at the rainbow and i'm like rainbow rainbow ah i just get so excited i love it because there was actually um, a pink rainbow last week and I missed it. I saw it all over like Twitter and Instagram. People were posting this pink rainbow and I was like, where was I? I was actually in the supermarket at the time and I completely missed it. Um, did you see it? Do you know what? I didn't actually see it. I saw the, the pink clouds, which looked lovely. I mean, it was incredible. But I, yeah, I was, I'm like you. I saw it on um, Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> One day our time will come and we will see. We will see our own pink rainbow. <laughs>